Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib and I've got an update for you all on the ATSC 3 DRM situation. The broadcasters think they've got a solution to our DRM problem, but I don't think it's going to get us there. Let's get to it. Now a quick recap here in case you don't know what I'm talking about. Here in the US we can watch television for free over the public airwaves by using an antenna connected to our television, or in my case and many of your cases, into what's called a gateway device, like an HD home run or a Tableau. And what those devices do is allow you to plug an antenna into a single spot and then get the TV signals out onto your local computer network. So you can watch it on your phone, on your smart TV, on your computer. Pretty much gives you a streaming experience with something that you're picking up over the air for free. And it provides a lot of flexibility. The issue here is that the broadcasters are hoping that the transition to a new standard called ATSC3 will allow them to encrypt the signal, which will limit what we, the consumers, can do with that signal when it arrives in the home. And up until now, their vision for this was only to have an antenna plugged into an individual television. But yesterday, they announced that they finally locked in the specification for DVR devices and gateway devices like the Tableau and the HD Home Run. So why don't we dive into the A3SA's press release here and see what they are announcing. I don't believe we'll be able to, as consumers or journalists, get a hold of the standard itself because it is proprietary, but we can, from the press release, see what might be in it. Now, it's important to note here is that the A3SA is the standards body responsible for the encryption. They are a different group than the ATSC side of this, which develops the broadcast signal and all the video encoding rules that go into that. Some broadcasters might choose not to encrypt their signal, and therefore they are not going to have to worry about the A3 SA standards on the transmission side. Now, there's some interesting words in here that I want to point out. The first word is secure DVRs, and this refers to the fact that in the future for encrypted channels, any DVR, whether it be software or hardware based, is going to have to go through an expensive certification process, not by the FCC, but by the A3SA and the broadcasters to ensure that they meet whatever standards they're trying to set. And so that is going to severely limit the options that consumers have for the DVRs that they're going to use in their home. That's not going to happen right away. It's going to be fine until ATSC1 is sunsetted. But right now, this is going to put an end to a number of popular software and hardware packages that can't afford to go through this process. They're also using the word gateway, which is great to see for the first time because this is what we've been screaming about for months. And they also talk about other accessory devices. Now what's also good here is that they talk about a newly added alternative method to let viewers securely stream ATSC3 content from such devices throughout their home network. Now what many of us activists have been assuming all along is that they never had a plan for these gateway devices like the Tableau and the HD Home Run. And this kind of confirms it for me, that they never really considered these things as part of the plan. Maybe they didn't think that many people used them, or perhaps they were hoping to roll this out without support for it to force us into expensive streaming options where they collect subscriber fees. Who knows? But it's great to see that in here finally. And again, a bit of an acknowledgement that this wasn't part of the plan all along. Now on the surface, all of this sounds great. We've got our gateway language in there. We don't have to have antenna cables running all over the house. We can stream within the home. All the things that we've been screaming about are finally in here. That's awesome. But let's read on because it's not so great as you dig a little further here. Now, later on in the press release, they refer to the specification that's designed to work with the A3SA's earlier established broadcaster encoder rules. And these rules, sound good on the surface here where it says viewers must be allowed to decrypt and record these broadcasts even if they are using a less secure device that requires an internet connection. Viewers must be allowed to make an unlimited number of copies of broadcasts. Such copies cannot have retention limits. Viewers must be allowed to use trick play features such as pause, rewind, fast forward, and ad skipping. Viewers must be allowed to use any authorized digital output. They also need to be able to have these things work with legacy televisions. But this is the big but. These rules only apply to ATSC3 broadcasts that are simulcast with ATSC 1.0. So if you think about it, all of these rules, which are all the things and freedoms we enjoy today, 
may not happen when ATSC3 becomes the sole standard or if they spin up an ATSC3 only channel now. So all of this is at risk here. None of this is guaranteed. And the fact that they included this language here in the press release leads me to think that they want to retain the right to control what you can do with your content on your personal DVR. They could set retention limits. They could prevent you from recording. They could prevent skipping. They could do a lot of things that they can't do now with the 1.0 content. And the only one setting these rules is them. It's not us. It's not the FCC or the Congress or the government or anybody else. These are their own rules that they're making up. And basically, none of these rules will apply after the 2027 transition. And that's still here in their plan. Now, another area of concern for me are the device compatibility promises here. So what they're saying right now is that this new specification will support Android, Fire TV, Roku, WebOS, which is what runs LG televisions, and Tizen, which I believe runs Samsung TVs. But guess what's not working yet? iOS, which of course runs on the Apple TV along with iPhone and iPad. They said support for that is in process, which means that it's not locked in yet. And this has been a big area of concern because Google is the one encrypting the content with their standard and Apple doesn't use that. So we'll have to see what they do to get that working, but it does appear as though they're trying to promise that here in the standard to encompass a bulk of what you might plug into a smart television. But there's a lot of stuff missing here. Microsoft products, for example, the Xbox and Windows PCs, the PS5, some of us watch TV on our game consoles. You can't do that with the new standard. Also missing, of course, are Macs. And this is how I watch TV in the morning. I load it up on my MacBook here to catch the local news and weather. I can't do that with an encrypted signal and it doesn't appear to be promised here in the standard, although maybe the Apple could get picked up with iOS support, but they're leaving out a lot if they're locking Microsoft products, including Windows and Xbox, out of this new standard. And speaking of compatibility, there's at least six different live TV DVR recording applications that may not be able to continue if these rules come into play. That includes things like the Channels app, which is a great third-party solution, Plex, Next PVR, Kodi, MB, Jellyfin. I'm probably missing some here that may not go through this certification process because it's not just getting certified, you have to maintain that certification and there's legal liabilities to not maintaining your certification that uh, would put these small open source projects or these small companies at risk of serious litigation. They may not want to be bothered with it. So I'm still concerned about this and I still think we need to keep the pressure on to not allow the broadcasters to encrypt public over the air signals, period. And the reason is, is that what we're seeing throughout this announcement is them still retaining the ability to limit what we can do with those recordings, limit skipping, limit pausing even, retention limits, all the things that they say they're not gonna do, they can do per their own rules and per their own press releases once the ATSC 1.0 standard is sunset. So go to the FCC, I've got instructions here on the screen where you can file your concerns and I think we need to reference this because the broadcasters will go to the FCC and say to them, we've met all of their concerns. We're gonna allow gateway devices, let us encrypt. But we're seeing here, this doesn't do anything but inconvenience us and limit our choices as to what we can do with signals that we're picking up over the public airwaves. And that's why I think we need to keep the pressure on here. So maybe some progress, but not a solution. That's gonna do it for this one. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Budley, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Steve Green, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more.
And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv s.